as a mother because you mentioned you, you are a mother yeah. how has that experience been have you um, <laughs> have you had moments of paranoia <laughs> just because of your profession and you're like ah, is this happening or am i reading too much into it or yeah. even my relatives children you look at them like ah, <laughs> that's suspicious <laughs> how has yeah. that experience been so it has made me more aware mm. so for example my firstborn um had not spoken i think by 11, 11 months had mm. not spoken was quite a shy child mm -hmm. uh, but i knew that i had uh, like a few months before i can be like oh mm. this is a problem so everybody else around me had panicked and was like oh how come and especially because um some children had spoken that mm. were born around the same time that she was born mm -hmm. so there was pressure like uh, when is your child going to speak but because i had this knowledge mm. I, w I knew that i had time that it was not yet um she had not yet crossed the red line where mm. i would say there has been a delay however i have been able to pick out um situations within my wider family where i've noticed that some children are struggling and i've been able to give the right advice to the parents and to my relatives mm. uh, on what to do to assist these children yeah yeah What would you say are some of the influences you've had throughout your career that have really shaped how you work and how you assess children? So um, the influences have been, you know, from my small circle. Mm. I've been I've been interacted with some of my friends or relatives who've had children who are developing atypically, mm. and so I have because these are we can say relatives or you know people that I know very intimately. Mm. Uh, the influence on me has been how can I make the care for these children less uh, you know less difficult because in terms of uh, can i bring it closer can i make it cheaper can I so that has been has been uh, the influence on me to the extent that i started a podcast yeah. um, that uh, educates parents uh, teachers and any caregiver mm. of these children on uh, the development the developmental stages that a child goes through yeah. and what we can do even at the home level in case you can't access a doctor if you can't access a therapist if mm -hmm. you can't access a physiotherapist what can you do at home that yeah. can assist these children to develop awesome right. um it's it's a very impactful journey that you have been on and uh, congratulations <laughs> to you. you but Thank at you. the same time what would you say are some of the challenges that you've encountered so far um, it's challenging because um, uh, the access, as I mentioned, of mm. these children and these parents to people who are, even if you're not yet uh, certified, but at least you have some knowledge on developmental uh, stages or, you know, how to help such children, uh, the access is very difficult. I would love to access all children, even those who are not atypically uh, developing, to, mm. you know, just educate and just to check. So it's very difficult because we are very few, mm. those of us who are on this side of, you know, being aware of what constitutes the development of a child and what constitutes the care that mm. they need. So those are some of the challenges. It's not a widely recognized field. Mm. So m many times people would ask you, oh, what is the development of a child? Yeah. What is it exactly? So even at a policy level, mm. we are trying uh, with my colleagues to you know, influence at a policy level, at the national government level, mm -hmm. that perhaps uh, we can even do an assessment of all children before school entry or you know, at certain points in their lives, perhaps mm. at six months we can have a check, at one year we can have a check, at one and a half, you know, ki at key points of their lives where we can make a big impact. Yeah. Those are things that need to happen at a national level mm. that perhaps we can have a developmental assessment of all children at one year so that we, we get those who are trailing behind and we support them. Yeah. So it's a very expensive uh, care for mm. the child. You'll find a child who is delaying requires physiotherapy, requires True. occupational therapy, requires speech therapy, requires uh, play therapy, requires behavioral uh, modification strategies for the parents. So it's a very expensive journey. You'll find mm -hmm. a child requires, if they need to go see a therapist, they are paying 
between a thousand to three thousand for a session that lasts an hour. Mm -hmm. Very few parents are able to afford that. It's not covered. Most insurances will not cover such therapies. Uh, so it's a very expensive journey. And mm -hmm. even for the, the health, uh, the caregivers, it's very expensive because sometimes the child is not able to come to you. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're not able to walk. So it often means sometimes that I go to them. It's expensive. The fuel is, uh, is high. Uh, some areas are difficult to reach because yeah. of the terrain.